gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to gain. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Old, oh, strange and divine, I can sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in dark, but I am not forsaken, for by my side the Savior He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need His power is displayed. To this I hold my shepherd will defend me through the deepest valley he will lead oh the night has been won and i shall overcome yet not i but through christ in I know I am forgiven The future sure The price it has been paid For Jesus bled And suffered for my pardon And he was raised To overthrow the grave To this I hold my sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever is my plea. Oh, the chains are released. I can sing, I am free. Yet not I, but through Christ. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home. And day by day, I know he will renew me, until I stand with joy before the throne. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, all the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me, yet not I, but through Christ. We come to worship you, O oh God. We trust your presence is here. Open our hearts to your grace. Transform us, O oh God. 
when we are on the mountaintop, transform us, O oh God. When we are in the low valley, transform us, O oh God. When we see your face reflected back at us in the face of a neighbor or stranger, transform us, O oh God. Transform us, O oh God, to shine your love in our worship and in our world today. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Transform us into the likeness of your Son, who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A brief note before we start reading our gospel text for today. If you are following along with the Tri-Church Bulletin, I am going to read more of the story than what is printed in your bulletin. So instead of uh, stopping at verse 36, we are going to read um, all of Luke chapter 9, verses 28 through 43. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, about eight days after say these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on to the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. 
not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud, a voice that said, from the cloud came a voice that said, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent in those days, told no one any of the things they had seen. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him. Just then, a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. Suddenly, a spirit seizes him, and all at once he shrieks. It convulses him until he foams at the mouth. It mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were astounded at the greatness of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. When I was growing up, my church uh, that my family went to had a long history of pastoral interns. People who were training to be pastors would come to our congregation and be with us for a year, preaching and teaching and doing all the things a pastor does. We called them vicars. One Sunday, vicar Chris told a story that he had learned from his pastor growing up. Her name was Pastor Stephanie Kopsch. Today, I am going to tell you Pastor Stephanie's story as I remember it almost 20 years later from when Pastor Chris told it. I just wanted to give you this background so that I could give Pastor Chris and Pastor Stephanie credit for this story. So here goes. Once upon a time, in an ordinary home, a young child was eating his breakfast. His mother was busy making sure that all the kids had what they needed to get ready for school that day. And the little boy called out to his mother from across the kitchen, Mom, is God in our house? His mother uh, didn't really give it much thought and just said, yes, honey, without looking up from packing the lunches. God is everywhere, she said. So mom, is God in the kitchen? The little boy continued. Well, yes, um, the kitchen is in our house and God is everywhere, she said. And this time she looked up to see what her son was doing and he was quizzically looking at his juice cup. Mom, he said. Yes, honey, she replied. Mom, he asked, is God in my juice cup? Now, his mother wasn't exactly sure how to answer, but given her previous logic, uh, she thought she better say yes, because the juice cup was part of everywhere. So she says, Yes, baby, God is in your juice cup. Her son smiled mischievously and triumphantly and quickly smashed his little hand on top of the juice cup and said, gotcha. Now, I don't know why this youngster wanted to catch God. And of course, with God being everywhere, God didn't stay trapped in that juice cup. But I think we can sympathize with this little guy's struggle to want to catch God or contain God. The disciple Peter certainly relates to this kiddo's endeavor. In our gospel text, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up to a mountain to pray. 
And suddenly in the middle of the prayer, Jesus' appearance changes and he is glowing and his clothes become dazzling white. And he's talking with Moses and Elijah about his departure or his exodus, which he's going to experience in Jerusalem. Now at this point, Peter and his companions have gotten pretty sleepy during this prayer and they're pretty groggy, but they start to realize what's going on and they see Jesus shining with all the glory of God and Moses and Elijah with him. It's a special moment. It's a mountain top moment, a once in a lifetime out of this world kind of thing. So once Moses and Elijah are getting ready to go on their way, Peter says, wait. He tells Jesus, master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter wants to keep these messengers close and with him. He might have thought it was the end of the age. Um, you know, it, P Peter and his companions and all of the first century Jews were waiting for a Messiah to come. And here it sure seemed like it was happening right in front of them. We also have the symbolism with Elijah because Elijah um, is kind of thought to be associated with the end times. So Peter is just trying to make sense of this moment, especially when he sees Jesus glowing like the sun, the S-U-N sun, like fiery and vibrant. And Jesus is also glowing like the sun, the S-O-N, the son of God. Here he was in the glory of God. Peter probably saw this glorious moment and thought, well, this must be, must be it. The Messiah is here. We can just live happily ever after. But while Peter is talking, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as the cloud overtook them and swallowed up the light. A voice from the cloud said, this is my son, the chosen, my chosen, listen to him. And quite quickly after that, Peter and his companions were left alone with Jesus. They kept silent and didn't talk about what they had witnessed, probably still trying to make sense of this glorious mountaintop experience. But that next day, it's time to go down the mountain. They cannot stay there and bask in Jesus' glory. The voice from heaven encourages them. When it says, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him. It encourages them that Jesus had more to teach and the disciples had more to learn. Jesus' greatness and glory could not just stay in a tent on a mountain with just Peter, James, and John. Jesus cannot be contained. When they get down the mountain, Jesus is immediately confronted with a desperate father and he begs Jesus to heal his son from a demon. Now Jesus responds in a way that's kind of uncharacteristically annoyed and I don't really have any explanation for that except he seems to be um, ready to be on his way to Jerusalem um, for, for his exodus, for, for the things that are to come. But he does indeed rebuke this unclean spirit and the boy is healed. Everyone around Jesus was astonished at the greatness of God. The greatness of God appeared before them through the healing of a child. The crowd witnessed Jesus' glory on a crowded and dusty street, not on the mountaintop. They saw God's greatness in Jesus' human face and mortal hands not in his glowing transfiguration. 
the crowd experienced Jesus's and it, God's greatness in a compassionate healing, not in a triumphant and victorious takeover with a castle on a cloud. Jesus wouldn't, he couldn't just live on a mountain with a few chosen friends and be king of the hill. Instead, he goes down. He's in the streets among the people. God's greatness is with the humble and the hurting and in healing those in need. Sometimes we think God's greatness is only in the perfect mountaintops that we create for ourselves. Sometimes um, we intentionally or unintentionally, it seems, try to contain God in just the greatness of our own sanctuaries or cathedrals. Or we think that God's glory can only be experienced by people who believe just like we do. Or people who think or vote or act or love just like we do. But God's glory cannot be contained. God's glory is present in the places that we least expect. God, in the person of Jesus, was born in a manger in a stable. And God's glory is in the streets, on a crucifixion cross, and in an empty tomb. God's greatness and glory will show up in our life in unexpected ways and places. It'll be there when you receive a helping hand. Or it might show up when you're just simply eating breakfast with a juice cup. I hope that all that we do this week is for God's glory. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out on us in abundance so that we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all God has made. 
Transform us by your greatness, O God. Send us down the mountain to share joy with all people. Make us agents of change, confident that your hope will vanquish despair and your goodness will conquer evil. God of grace, hear our prayer. The mountains and the valleys sing your praise. Dazzle us with your presence in every landscape. Bluffs built by ancient glaciers, canyons carved by flowing rivers, flat horizons with uninterrupted views, and sands shaped by ocean tides. God of grace, hear our prayer. Heal those who are in distress. Give patience to those waiting for answers. Grant hope to those who have reached limits of treatment. Give compassionate hearts to those who accompany loved ones through illness and uncertainty. God of grace, hear our prayer. Today we shout Alleluia from the mountaintop. This week we enter the wilderness of Lent. Bless all who prepare and lead us in worship during this change of season. Pastors, deacons, musicians, all who contribute to our worship life, both in person and online or by phone. God of grace, hear our prayer. Blessed are they who listened to Christ's voice in this life and now rest with our Lord. Transform us from glory into glory and give us your peace that we may not lose heart. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such a great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for always providing our daily bread. You provide manna to the Israelites, barley loaves to the people, and Jesus as the bread of life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Our Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to share your love in the world. Amen. God calls you by name. You are God's child. God loves you. God is proud of you. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.